Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. The second of six graded stakes races on Saturday at Santa Anita is the Grade 2 Buena Vista. It's race number five, and it is smack in the middle of the coast-to-coast -coast all turf pick five that begins with two grass races at Gulfstream Park, comes back to Santa Anita for the Buena Vista, back to Gulfstream, and then closes out at Santa Anita with the Grade 1 Kilroe Mile a little bit later in the card. So the Buena Vista... Phillies and Mares at a mile on grass, race number five, right smack in the middle of the sequence that begins in Gulfstream Park's race number seven with the Palm Beach Stakes. Okay, we're keeping it local here in California. And the Buena Vista, a deep field, a, a, actually a, an outstanding field of 11. The only top grass filly who's not in this race, and she might be the best grass filly in California, is Luck. We will see her a little bit later in the season probably in the Royal Heroine. But in the meantime, we're left with a field of 11. We're not left with a field of 11. We're treated with a field of 11. And let's take a look at the first eight runners in the field. And most in the field are actually stakes winners, including a couple of grade one winners, such as going to Vegas, who's on page two, Mucho Unusual, also another grade one winner. Legs galore, the speed of the field, Lots of good, solid, hard-knocking fillies and mares. There we go. A couple of grade one winners on the far outside going to Vegas and the cowbred mucho unusual. A good group of 11. But when you come right down to it, I believe that the race revolves around one of two horses, either the likely pace setter, legs galore, or going, <clears throat> going to Vegas, who we haven't seen in four months. As far as legs galore go, she's a California bred gray. She is a sprinter, or she has been most of her career. I'm talking about number five, legs galore. Last year, she kind of emerged from the allowance ranks, won a couple of stakes races. She went wire to wire in the Franz Valentine at a mile on grass last May at Santa Anita. And then her next two starts around two turns were not quite as impressive. She finished I thought a disappointing second in the grade three Wilshire. She got beat by a good mare that day, a good Philly Warren Showtime. And then she completely backed up in her next start at Del Mar. That was in the Solana Beach. She set the pace and she finished fourth. Phil D'Amato <clears throat> gave her the rest of the summer off and brought legs galore back in the Sunshine Millions Philly and Mare Turf Sprint. And this race was run down the hill at Santa Anita. It was the first start four legs galore since last summer. Let's take a look at the stretch of the Sunshine Million, Million Mare Turf Sprint. And legs galore made the lead. She went 22 and change, which is a slow pace coming down the hill. And she was gone. That's Alice Marble chasing her home as D'Amato runs 1-2. And the runner-up, Alice Marble, returned last week to win a minor stakes race. Legs galore, wire to wire, and after the finish, she galloped out like a mare that can stay a mile. I'm not going to second-guess Phil D'Amato. He believes that legs galore can get the trip. She certainly is the controlling speed, and I think that she is an absolute must-use in the Buena Vista. She's my second preference, however. I still have doubts whether a mile is her best trip. I'm not saying she won't get a mile, but I still have my doubts. And we're going to find out really once and for all on Saturday because Legs Galore ran well in her comeback. She is a better mare this year at age five than she was last year when she lost her second and third turf miles. But she's going to control the pace on Saturday. Legs Galore will. Ricky Gonzalez is aboard. D'Amato said that when Gonzalez and Legs Galore came back to be unsaddled after winning the Sunshine Millions, the first question he asked Gonzalez was, can she go a mile? And Gonzalez laughed and said, yeah, she can go a mile. She won well. She galloped out well. She's the controlling speed on Saturday. And Legs Galore could be long gone. 
if the distance is too far for legs galore, it might be too short for going to Vegas. Going to Vegas is has been best at a mile one eighth or beyond. And she also is making her first start since getting run into the ground <clears throat> last fall in the Breeders' Cup Billy and Mare Turf. She has been freshened since then. I'm talking about legs, uh, excuse me, going to Vegas. And she should get a great trip. Fordly placed, should get a great trip. She's breaking from post 10 in a mile grass race. So maybe that's a little premature to make that declaration. But at any rate, going to Vegas has enough tactical speed to be forwardly placed. She can finish. In fact, I think she's arguably the best finisher in the field among those that figure as contenders. I asked Richard Baltus, her trainer, if going to Vegas was ready to roll first star since last fall. And he laughed like it was a stupid question. And his answer was, of course she is. Flavian Pratt is aboard and going to Vegas should get the type of trip that she got last summer at Del Mar in the grade two John Maybe. Let's take a look at the stretch run of the Maybe last summer. And going to Vegas, who sat second behind the speed, she got the first over trip. And from here, it was all over. She opened up and she won clear by more than two lengths. Dog, ta dog tag was chasing her home. And this was a good solid race. It was three starts back and I'm sh we're showing it because this is the type of trip that she figures to get on Saturday, sitting behind the speed and then and being one of the first to attack. So, uh, going to Vegas, after winning the John Maybe, she, in her very next start, she raced gate to wire in the grade one Rodeo Drive at Santa Anita. And then she would, again, run into the ground in the Breeders' Cup Billion Mare Turf, a race that in hindsight, Baltus probably should not have started her in. But as he, as he said earlier this week, when she won the grade one Rodeo Drive, that was a win in your end for the Breeders' Cup Billion Mare Turf. So Baltus's quote was, what am I going to do? Say no, don't run. No, they took a shot and going to Vegas was not good enough. Freshen since then, training well, Pratt aboard. And I think going to Vegas is the most probable winner of the Buena Vista, even though she probably wants a little bit more than the one mile distance. Okay, a couple other horses to at least mention in this field. We talked briefly about Mucho Unusual. Mucho Unusual is a grade one winner of the Rodeo Drive in 2020. She <clears throat> was supposed to run in late January in the megahertz, but a virus was going through trainer Tim Yatin's barn and Mucho Unusual did not start. So Mucho Unusual breaking from the far outside post 11 and making her first start since uh, finishing third last time out in the Franklin on January 1st. Johnny Velasquez is aboard. Yachtin believes that she is ready to roll. I'm not convinced that at age six, Mucho Unusual is as good as she was earlier in her career. I'm not convinced she's not either. She's my third preference. There's a knockout horse in the race <clears throat> who certainly is not good enough yet, but we don't know how good she will get. And I'm referring to number two, Tony Ann. Tony Ann has started only five times. She broke her maiden three starts back. She came right back and won an allowance race two starts back. And then last time out, she was three to five in a two other than allowance at Santa Anita, a race that on paper looked like she could not lose. And she almost did. Let's look at the stretch run of Tony Ann going a mile and one eighth as the speed of the field. And she opened up and right here, the race is all but over, right? Tony Ann gets out front. But she starts goofing around. The race is over. The competition is behind her. There's nothing left to do. And it got a little dicey late when Hogan's Holiday came rolling late. And Tony Ann had to dig in late. She did go on and win the race. But you would expect an odds-on favorite in an allowance race to win a little more decisively than the neck margin. D'Amato believes there's more there. I'm not, again, I'm not going to second guess Phil D'Amato. He's won more grass races this winter than any other trainer at Santa Anita. Tony Ann, we don't know how good she is yet. She's won her last three. She likes to get into a dogfight. She does not like to get beat. She's won three in a row. And who knows, maybe she is good enough. I would never talk anyone off a long shot in a race where the, the horse, he or she, is, quote, overmatched or outclassed because sharp horses going up the ladder 
can often be the best bet in all of racing. But when it comes right down to it, I think the Buena Vista goes through the speed of the field, legs galore, and if she does not stay the trip, I would expect comebacker going to Vegas, my top selection to win the Buena Vista. It's race number five on Saturday at Santa Anita. 